Potter equations. So here we're just going to look at some examples involving Potter equations. Let's look at x plus 6 over 4 equaling 2. If we have a fraction equals just a number, the first thing we want to do is multiply both sides by the denominator. So what will happen is the cancel out with the denominator, just leave us with the numerator, of x plus 6 equals 2 times 4 is 8. Now we can minus 6 from both sides, so x will equal 8 minus 6, which is 2. What about 5x minus 1 all over 4 equals 2x plus 3 all over 2. So whenever we have a fraction equaling another fraction, we can multiply both sides by the denominator of the other one. So something we can do called cross-multiplying. So we can take this denominator, multiply it by this side, and this denominator, and multiply it by this side. So we're going to end up with 2 times this numerator, equaling 4 times this other numerator. So when we do that, we have to expand our brackets. So 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. 4 times 2x is 8x. And 4 times positive 3 is positive 12. Now we want to bring our pronumerals together. I like taking the smaller one over to the bigger one. So 8x is smaller. So we're going to minus 8x from both sides. So 8x minus 8x is going to go. 10x minus 8x is 2x. Still got our minus 2 and our 12. Now we're trying to get x on its own. So that's plus 2 to both sides. So minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So we're just left with 2x on that side, equaling 14. Can divide both sides by 2. So we're just left with x equals 7. What about 4 plus x minus 5 over 2 equals minus 3. So here we have one fraction and a couple of other terms. If we have this case, the best thing we can do is multiply every single term by the denominator. So what's going to happen is that the 2 over 2 will cancel out. So we've got 2 times 4, which is 8. All we're going to be left with is the numerator there, x minus 5. And minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. Here we've got like terms on the same side, so let's do 8 minus 5, which is going to give us 3 plus x, equaling minus 6. Now we can just minus 3 from both sides, because 3 minus 3 is 0, and we get x equals, well, minus 6 minus 3 is minus 9. What about minus 2 outside of x minus 1 all over 3 equals 2 minus x all over 4. So again, we have two fractions equaling each other, and the best thing we can do is take this denominator, multiply it by this numerator, and this denominator, multiply it this, by this numerator. So we're going to get 4 times negative 2 outside of x minus 1 equaling 3 outside of 2 minus x. It's important we wrap it in brackets because when we multiply, we have to multiply by everything. So that's why I wrapped it in a bracket. So now we've got 4 times minus 2 is going to be minus 8 outside of x minus 1. This one we can expand straight away. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times minus x is minus 3x. Now let's expand the left-hand side. So minus 8 times x is minus 8x. Minus 8 times minus 1, we have to be careful there, because we're going to get plus 8. Still going to equal 6 minus 3x. Let's take the smaller, we've got prime numerals on both sides, so we want to take the smaller one to the bigger one, 
out of minus 8x and minus 3x, minus 8x is smaller. So let's add 8x to both sides. So minus 8x plus 8x is going to be 0. I'm just left with 8. 6. Now minus 3x plus 8x is going to give us plus 5x. Now we can minus 6 from both sides. It's going to be 0. So we're going to get 8 minus 6, which is 2, equaling 5x. Let's divide both sides by 5. So x is going to be 2 over 5, because those 5s will cancel out. Let's do one more. 7 minus 2x over 3 minus 6 minus x over 2 equals 1. Now when we have frac now we're adding or subtracting fractions on one side with different denominators. What's really important to know here is we're minusing this fraction with two terms in the numerator. So whenever you see that, the first thing you should do is add some brackets around that term that's being subtracted. We need to make the denominators the same. So we need to look at what the highest common factor is. Sorry, the lowest common multiple. And the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. So we need to make both of those denominators 6. We can make this one 6 by times in by 2. Whatever we do the denominator, we need to do the numerator. And we can make this one 6 by times in by 3. And that's what we need to do to this numerator. I'm just going to write out the front of the bracket. So let's just rewrite that. So we're going to have, well, let's add in some brackets, actually like this, because it's important, because we need to times that whole numerator by 2. So when we expand this 2 out, we're going to have 2 times 7, which is 14, 2 times minus 2x, which is going to be minus 4x over 6. I'm just going to leave this one factorized, not expanded just yet, over 6 equals 1. Now we have the same denominator, so we can put it all over 6 and just subtract the numerators from each other. I'm just going to write it all in the numerator. 14 minus 4x minus 3 outside of 6 minus x still all equals 1. Let's expand that numerator. So we're going to have 14 minus 4x. Now we're going to have minus 3 times 6, which is going to be minus 18. Minus 3 times minus x is going to give us plus 3x. And this is the most common mistake that everyone's going to make. It's going to be all the way from back here, this minus and minus are going to have to go expand with each other to get this positive down here. So you can see it carried the minus and the minus carried all the way through. And we ended up with a positive term for that second one. So that's going to be all over 6 equals 1. Let's multiply both sides by 6 to cancel out with that denominator. So the 6's will cancel. And at the same time, let's simplify our numerator. So we're going to have 14 minus 18, which is going to give us minus 4. And minus 4x plus 3x is going to be minus x. And 1 times 6 will be 6. Let's add 4 to both sides. So minus 4 plus 4 will be 0, so we get minus x equals 10. And now we can times both sides by negative 1, because we just want to know what x is. So minus x times minus 1 will just give us x, and 10 times minus 1 gives us minus 10.